Hello and welcome back to our lecture dealing with the adaptive immune system. After we have learned a bit about the function of antibodies in adaptive immune system, let us have a look what cells are actually involved in the system. The first type of cells you need to remember if it comes to adaptive um, immune system are so-called B cells. The second type of important cells that contribute to the adaptive immune system are T cells and B cells can be further subdivided into memory B cells and plasma B cells. In contrast, T cells can be divided into cytotoxic T cells, sometimes referred to as CD8 positive cells, and helper T cells that are referred to as CD4 positive cells. So, what is the function of those cells? Plasma B cells are the cells of the adaptive immune system that actively release and produce antibodies. In contrast, memory B cells do not produce antibodies but can be reactivated to become plasma cells. And those cells are the key of uh, immune system memory. Those cells actually do remember uh, if the system has been exposed to a certain um, uh, microorganism and can be reactivated fairly quickly. And this is the reason why the second exposure to the pathogen uh, results in a very quick reaction of the adaptive immune system. Cytotoxic T cells induce infected cells to kill themselves. Uh, however, you need to distinguish between those cells and natural killer cells that are part of the immune, uh, innate immune system. But we are going to be looking at those cells, uh, cells in detail later on. Helper T cells assist other cells. They assist um, um, B cells in the maturation. They also contribute to activation of cytotoxic T cells as they contribute to activation of macrophages. Importantly, there is also another uh, subtype of T-cells that we are going to be um, having a look at later on. Those are so-called memory T-cells. So our immune system can also remember infections uh, using T-cells. So, what are B-cells? B-cells are cells of the hematopoietic system, of the blood system. They are white blood cells and they are formed and matured in the bone marrow. Hence the name B cells. B -B -cell. So how does it work? Naive B cells, again, are formed in the bone marrow. Afterwards, they move into the lymphatic system and circulate throughout the body once they underwent the process of maturation. Each of the B cells has one of the millions of distinctive surface antigen specific antibodies and this is fairly random uh, again because it is the result of DNA rearrangement and alternative splicing during maturation of those cells. Those cells can recognize antigens utilizing those specific antibodies. And again, just a reminder, antigens are toxins or other foreign substances which induce an immune response in the body, especially the production of antibodies. So when a naive B cell encounters an antigen which fits like a key into a lock into the antibody, it becomes either a memory B cell or an effector B cell, uh, also referred to as plasma cell. So this is actually the process we can see here. So once a naive B cell in the system encounters an uh, antigen, this leads to rapid cell division or proliferation of those cells. Afterwards, those cells undergo differentiation. They specialize, followed by uh, multiple rounds of proliferation. And this proliferation leads to a clonal the, the clonal expansion of the cells. So as a result, we end up with clones of plasma cells that actively produce antibodies against the specific antigens the naive B cell encounters before, and also formation of memory cells that can be reactivated if the antigen uh, is sensed by the immune system uh, at a later time point. So how do our T cells look like and where are they actually produced? Similar to B cells, T cells are actually also formed in the bone marrow. 
However, they don't mature in the bone marrow. T progenitor cells, so very early T cells, migrate to the thymus and hence the name T cell. They mature in the thymus and become fully differentiated T cells. They express the so-called T cell receptors and also other receptors called CD4 and CD8. CD stands for cluster of differentiation, but this is not something you need to remember. But remember CD4 and CD8. So what you should keep in mind though is that all T cells express T cell receptors and either CD4 or CD8, but never both. So cells, T cells that express T cell receptor and CD4 are T helper cells. In contrast, T cells expressing um, T cell receptor and CD8 are cytotoxic T cells, also referred to as killer T cells. The T cell receptor can only recognize antigens bound to major histocompatibility complex class 1 and class 2. So, if a um, um, body cell uh, that is infected by, um, uh, by a microorganism is um, uh, recognized by helper T cell or T cell, this leads to co stimulation by cytokines or activation of cytotoxic T cells. Those activated cytotoxic T cells undergo a clonal selection similar to B cells. They proliferate and differentiate. This leads to formation of a cytotoxic T cell clone. Those um, uh, T cell clones can undergo further specialization. They can form active cytotoxic T cell that actively recognize and attack infected body cells and so-called memory cytotoxic T cells that are actually long-lived. And this, those memory cytotoxic T cells are also partly in charge of the fast and strong um, uh, immune response, uh, response caused by the adaptive immune system if the body encounters a microorganism for the second time. So those cells also do contribute to efficacy of um, vaccines. So, what are the major histocompatibility complexes or MHCs I mentioned before? There are actually two classes of those receptors. We have the MHC class 1 receptors and MHC class 2 receptors. MHC class 1 receptors are present in all of nucleated body cells. This includes not only cells of the immune system, but all other cells in our body. In contrast, MHC class II molecules are only expressed by certain uh, cells of the immune system, uh, namely by macrophages, dendritic cells and B cells. So what is the difference of those two molecules? MHC class I molecules present own molecules. They are sort of ID card of each cell within our body. On those MHC class um, um, 1 molecules, our cells show the immune system that they are actually functioning properly and they do belong to the body. In contrast, MHC class 1 molecules present foreign molecules. In case of macrophages, when macrophages ingest and digest uh, microbes, they present parts of those microbes on MHC class II um, uh, molecules and teach thereby the immune system to react to the specific uh, microorganism. So, how does it work in detail? Again, MHC um, class I um, receptors or molecules are in charge of presenting um, molecules or proteins that are part of a healthy cell within the system. So proteins, once they reach the end of the lifetime uh, in the cell, are digested in a specific organelle in the cell referred to as proteasome. This leads to formation of shorter parts of the protein referred to as peptides. 
those peptides are loaded on MHC class 1 molecules in the endoplasmic reticule. Afterwards, they migrate to the membrane of all our cells and um, the peptides of our proteins are presented. If cytotoxic T cell encounters a cell in our system which is not presenting the proper pro proteins, if the protein is mutated, this leads to activation of the cytotoxic T cells and other um, um, cytotoxic T cells then are able to attack cells that present a faulty protein. So why this is, is this important? This is extremely important to um, avoid cancer formation. So whenever cancer forms, this is actually accompanied by mutations in certain genes. In many instances, those mutations lead to formation of faulty protein, proteins that have a changed shape, changed, um, um, changed structure and also change function. In many instances, those changes lead to uncontrolled proliferation and other pathological changes in cancer cells. However, um, most cancer cells actually still present proteins on MHC class 1 molecules as normal cells do. If now a mutated or faulty peptide is presented, cytotoxic T cells are able to recognize it, uh, leading to removal of those faulty cancer cells within the system. And actually this system is fairly efficient um, because mutations occur in our cells on a daily basis. But most of those faulty or um, uh, tumorigenically transformed cells are actually recognized and actively removed. So again, if um, a B cell or other um, cells of our body present proper proteins, um, cells can actually recognize it. However, if transformed cells um, present faulty uh, proteins, they are actually able to, uh, to be recognized by the cytotoxic T cells. Those MHC molecules, however, are also important for the function of natural killer cells. And this is just additional information to show you the big picture. So not only uh, cytotoxic uh, T cells, but also NK cells rely on the presence of MHC uh, molecules. And in cancers, uh, sometimes uh, the following happens. Cancer cell, uh, cancer cells often downregulate expression of MHC1, so they are not showing proteins that are within the cell on the surface of those molecules. If now natural killer cell encounters a cell which is negative for MHC um, type 1 molecules, this leads to activation of the natural killer cell and also removal of this tumorigenically transformed cell. So, after we have looked um, in close detail at MHC type 1 or class 1 molecules, let us have a brief look at MHC class 2 pathway, which is important for presenting molecules or um, um, antigens belonging to microorganisms. So, what you are looking at here is the extracellular portion of the immune cell and intracellular portion. If a macrophage encounters a microbe depicted here, this is ingested and digested in specific organelles in the macrophages. Afterwards, parts of the um, uh, microorganism, process parts of the organism, are um, loaded onto MHC class 1 molecules in the Golgi apparatus and migrate to the membrane of macrophages. Here, they are presented on the, on the surface of MHC class 1 molecules. Helper T cells are able to recognize um, um, those antigens and they teach other, other cells within the immune system to react to those specific antigens, including B cells and cytotoxic um, um, T cells. With this, I would like to end our second session and I will see you shortly in session number three. Thank you very much for your attention.